meaning not just astronomers but ordinary people were encountering time in their daily life. So uh, there are units of time which are mentioned in many of the standard Tamil literature. Again, I won't read all of them, just giving you a glimpse. Uh, the uh, unit of time it goes like this. Pudi is the smallest uh, uh, unit that they talk about. Hundred of that pudi is equal to one kilogram. Eleven thirty means one division, and uh, twenty-seven division is Gurvachar. Like this, it goes up to a month, and up to beyond month also. But one can very clearly see that uh, your measurement, which is one by eight lakh of a second, is not something that would have been uh, practically possible in those days. Similarly, the uh, talk of uh, yuga within the Puranic literature, I am not talking about uh, yuga as defined by Aryabhata and others, the astronomical yuga, but the Puranic yuga is also a very, very huge number. So these both minute and huge numbers perhaps are largely speculations for uh, fulfilling other purposes. But practically, what is being used was the, uh, a, a concept like this. Matre is something that uh, is computed when you are uh, reading a verse. For example, a, a length of a verse should be of so many matres. Right, so that there is some way you can actually use a verse to compute the time that has taken, the time that has passed. Nowadays, the most often used uh, uh, computation, I mean, whenever people are talking about in daily life, it is about Nadi. Even for ritual purposes, except in the very, very, uh, 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 I mean, extreme cases, in most of the cases, for example, if you are going to fix your, your auspicious time, that is going to be certain mohurtams, which means two nadi. So it is, I mean, below nadi, actually in your life, the time, number of times that you would have used the unit of time, practically would have been almost zero. Okay, so nadi becomes a very important uh, part. Here I put around because it's wrong actually, the sovereign of nadi means one drama. Okay. Uh, ganam or charam, if you want to use the Sanskritized pronunciation. There is again a concept that is uh, used in your daily life to say that instantaneous or around almost instantaneous. So they serve certain purposes, but not in the practical life. Let's look at, for example, your text called Silvata. Okay, it tells you that uh, how you find time, how do you compute time at a given point of time. If there is data, so this one is talking about data. There are also certain rules for finding in night time. It's too involved, so I didn't bring it here to uh, explain to you. Otherwise, you know a little bit of positional astronomy. It will be not easy to uh, understand that, so I am not bringing it. Uh, movement of sun is slightly easier. Okay? Just simply say that, leave your uh, thumb finger. Suppose if the sun is on this side, stand like this. So your finger will cast a shadow, right? If your shadow falls here, it means sun is very much down. It means time has, I mean, like it's a, it's a sunrise time, right? If the shadow exactly falls within your finger, roughly, then it means the sun is on your top. So, in between, these three fingers give you three equal time levels. Wherever the shadow falls, that gives you three equal time levels. So, roughly, this is 15 uh, that is from sunrise to uh, Sun going top of your head is 15 RD. So it means that about 5 RD you can actually measure with such a simple uh, method. Okay? It is described and prescribed, which essentially means this is something that people should have actually practiced. Okay? In a, in a, in a technical text on it's something that they should have practiced. Right? It's not something that should have been just like a recreational mathematics. That's something that we can see. That's the same one in uh, the verse in Tal, that's what is explained there. Okay. And this verse comes in many other places, not just in Sikrasatra. Uh, this is the uh, sinking bow, which actually uh, tells you passage of one night. Uh, the uh, 
highly astronomy text talks about how you should construct this vessel. But if you actually go and look at travelers' description, what were actually people using? Widely. There might have been few places they would have been using this, but they are not talking that. Widely people were just using a coconut shell. Okay, coconut shell with a small bone. That's what the travelers have found many many accounts uh, talk about. So which essentially means people are not really worried about exactly computing one hour according to the definition. But they have ordered some equal interval of time for certain activities. Let's say if I want to, uh, if I am the person in charge of, I mean like the green card, that is I am in charge of ensuring that different uh, uh, plots of land are irrigated from uh, one canal, I am in charge of that. I have this kind of a bow made out of coconut. So whether that coconut actually measures one hour a day or some amount of time, doesn't matter, right? So for five turns, I send water to you. Five turns, I send water to you. It's equal water. Right? So uh, one was not actually interested in measuring exactly one hour a day. This itself was also called as hour day in factory purposes. So when some uh, travelers, some, some surveyors, actually try to measure the timing from a modern clock, how much time it takes to sing, they found variation between 20 to 24. Okay, so, so it means that uh, people are not really interested in getting exactly the 24 minute value because one day is supposed to be 16 value. The second is using your shadow. Suppose I stand here and the sun is here, the sun will cast a shadow, my shadow, right? So I adjust myself in such a way that uh, the shadow of my head falls on, for example, exactly on the edge of, let's say, that, uh, what is that? Sankapo, okay, this one. So I know that length of my shadow is this. Then I start measuring with my feet. Okay, I measure my feet. And there is a formula. That is, uh, add 11 to your uh, measure, then uh, 210 divided by x, whatever is the steps that you measured plus 11, that gives you an RK. RK that has elapsed. Not the RK that is current, but the RK that has elapsed. Okay. So there are uh, simple uh, memory techniques to remember this. Yeah. So, which also means that this is something that people are widely actually using. But now let's look at this thing very carefully. Uh, sun, most of you know, does not actually rise on east every day. The sunrise point moves from the southeast to northeast. So, suppose on a particular day, the sunrise point is the southeast. It means the sun will be going like this. So when it is noon, I will be still casting a shadow in camera. In noon, I will be still casting a shadow. It will not be zero shadow. Okay? Except on two days in a year. Rest of the day, it is not going to be zero shadow. So that means the length of my shadow cannot be linearly equated to passage of time. Yeah? But on practical purposes, on daily life, people were actually using this as a measure because that's enough. Whereas, when you are uh, going to, uh, so these are all the different uh, shadow length that it says that how much energy is elapsed, etc. Okay. But when you are going to do, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ritual practice or uh, some ceremony. This kind of approximation would not be. For example, you are supposed to have a marriage in a so called auspicious uh, time. You can't take this uh, measure. For that, there are corrections. That is, if it is uh, Chitrama, then add this many. If it is uh, first 10 days of Chitrama, add this many. If it is the second 10 days of Chitrama, add this many. Or subtract some, this many. Right? You know, so those kind of corrections to uh, the earlier formula was also there, but that was used only in the context of when you want to compute ritual time. But when you want to calculate 
uh, for your regular purposes like how, how long maybe the sun will be there in the sky before it sets you use this rough measure and keep going <coughs> So, in the shadow method, actually one can find that there are three uh, types. The one is more precise, useful for IO astronomy. Second is for astrology and visual application where you are putting some corrections, but still you are taking 10 days as one gap. Okay? So, if even in the 10 days, the position of sun, inclination of sun will be right? But that is not taken into account, but still uh, you, you get a rough, uh, much more uh, better. Uh, and third is a practical unity. So within uh, the shadow method, you can see that there are three methods, I mean three, three uh, standards that one, one was given. If I'm getting the word right, standard. Yeah. So then there is uh, one more method which is very, very practical. You take a length of a row, like a coconut, uh, main of a coconut pile, you burn one end. The length it burns tells you time. Okay, so you can use it in case you are uh, uh, computing time between two uh, events, periods, etc. in your life. That's something. And this can be done both in uh, day time and night time for uh, finding out the duration between two events. So, context for measuring change what you measure. So like I was, uh, earlier I told you, like say for astral sciences, like say for example fixing astral line, you needed a better uh, measurement of time or uh, making your, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, your kundali or uh, your uh, jagadam, okay? uh, your, your zodiac chart, if you want to make that, you need to know the exact time of your birth, exact, of course, here doesn't exactly mean like microseconds. Because the least count within the uh, Jagadam itself is only 15 minutes. So it's only part of Nadigiri is what exactly you need to know. So when you, are, when you want to know that, you use the methods like uh, looking at stars or looking at uh, shadow using the corrections. When you are doing water irrigation, you take any cup with a hole, you can use it to find a duration. So it's a multiple of duration, gives you a result. When you are going to travel, you need a rough estimate, right? Like uh, how much time you have elapsed from sunrise. So even I can use the finger and calculate that maybe few nadis have elapsed. That's enough, right? So context of measuring uh, gives you uh, different methods for measuring. Okay, uh, here I need to tell one more thing. Even in the measurement practices, like say, for example, you are finding the shadow of your body. There are multiple algorithms which are being created. Not just one algorithm. I just only displayed one algorithm. Okay, multiply, I mean, uh, add 11, uh, divide 2, 10 by that number. That's only one algorithm. There are many other algorithms. Uh, so, what you do also, compare these uh, different algorithms for uh, anything like this. Practical measurement, the bow was called a skinny in uh, some places. So it can measure only one hard degree or one assumed hard degree. It may not be exactly 24 minutes but roughly 24 minutes. But no actual instrument has ever been found anywhere in India as of now with markings for finding lower units of time in this bow. So there is no material you can find. So there are people who make claims that you can mark, etc, etc. There are speculation. We have never found any actual bow historically in anywhere in any museums or any collection where there is markings of finding lesser units of time. So it can measure only that. So in water irrigation, the bow of equal measure of time, you just take it. Travel, how long the sun will be there in the sky? That's what you are uh, estimating. Like uh, in agriculture operations, we are using various kinds of cues. Like when the crow crows, it's the time for watering the field. Okay? When the sun is at a mar length from the horizon, that's the time to start the crow. Okay? So there are, in agriculture operations, you find that birds which combine 
uh, natural description of a natural event and also time. Okay, that kind of uh, combination that you find. Then, for example, the blooming of flowers were also used as a cue. I mean, uh, I should say that maybe I am lazy or whatever. I read a folk uh, song from Tajabodi where the laborers are singing to the flower. They are singing to the flower saying that from morning I have been working, I am so tired, my backbone is broken. Why don't you very help blooms fast so that I can go back home? It's a folk song. So which essentially means that at working time in the pre-modern society was like for example sunrise. I mean actually this song also says that when the first light of the sun comes, I have come to the field to work. So from the first light of the sunlight to when the this flower starts blooming. That's a that's a so flower blooming was also used as a cue for uh, uh, figuring out time. So these are all few things that I wanted to share. This is the area that uh, I am uh, interested in right now working. Yeah. So any questions? Uh, how, how to measure the, how to measure the uh, uh, time at the ends of showdown? See, to measure the time at the end, uh, if you are going to do it for astronomical purposes, you use an instrument like this. Okay? So, what you do is, there are two holes here. You adjust in such a way, you adjust the sandal in such a way that these two holes exactly point to those two stars. Whereas the center directly points to blue star. Okay. So you align three stars by adjusting. This will give you time. That will give you time. Basically it is like of course when you are near equator it's not that easy. But when you are away from equator, uh, we uh uh major, that is the sheet. And Durutara, it, it, it works like a clock phase. In different periods of the year, the position will be. So we can actually read it off. Of course, the Indian instrument was slightly different, but the principle is essentially. But this is what you mean, I guess. Well. If you have to actually practically use it, the uh, complexity is so much that you don't use it on daily life. Right? Night, you don't get up and say that, oh, I want to get up at uh, 12 that you have to cash a train. Right, so in daily life, you are using that is the song which again says that uh, in uh, for this particular month, look for this particular Rasi. If the Rasi is near the uh, Aridha, it is uh, so and so Gamma, which is essentially about uh, seven Nadi. So it is not talking about much more, uh, it's not even talking about a Nadi level, it's likely a uh, larger unit of time. I mean, for practical use purposes. That body spaces denote what? Which space? After, the, after 5 and carrying between 5 and 8, we can see. Uh, between 5 and 8, we can see. That is, uh, that, is, that is before, uh, that is because uh, when you are looking at the celestial sphere, suppose if there is an arc and pulse side of the earth, there is a celestial sphere, there is a part of the celestial sphere which is below your head, right? So that's a uh, part of the celestial sphere which will be below the head of the uh, northern. But the Indian uh, Indian uh, instrument is slightly different. Uh, anyway, this is not what we have. Sandarsh. Yeah, Sandarsh. Uh, it always go to the north. Yeah, you are. No. Sorry? The always go to the north. No, no. The Dhruvara will be in the north. Dhruvara will be in the north. Sandarsh Mandala will ro rotate around the Dhruvara. It will rotate in the sky. The area is what we must be Sorry? The area. Area? What must be used? This instrument. This instrument and this method. This instrument and method is described in India widely. <coughs> uh, roughly, I think around uh, 1180, you have a text which talks about it in uh, Sanskrit. I, I can't exactly remember, I think it is about 1180 that uh, this instrument is being talked about. 
and uh, in many uh, museums you find uh, Indian instruments. Actually, this is the Indian instrument. One kind of Indian instrument. There are many other methods, many other. I didn't put all of them. Uh, actually, there is a very very good collection. If you are looking for standard astronomy instruments, there is a good collection by R. Sharma. I took it from R. Sharma. I don't think uh, you can ever find the answer for it because this instrument is a European work. This one, this one currently I'm showing you the European one. This is the Indian one. Both are working on the same things. Okay. So and uh, for me it's uh, of no interest. For me, the interest would be that if I find differences, what the differences signify? Is there any uh, context, geographical or otherwise? Who found the area out of the mess? Yeah, yeah, technology keeps trans uh, changing and technology is an instrument always get uh, adapted at a local level. Adapted means you have added something new. So it is not the same. Okay? We have an instrument which measures one nadi. However, let's say 10% accuracy, 20% accuracy, we have an instrument which measures a nadi. Is there any instrument which actually measures, let's say, a Google? No. Not used. Yeah. Actually, one in the nadi is somewhat a, a, a kind of fraction. So, it, it's actually equated to our nadi. <laughs> so, so, there is, uh, I mean, without that instrument, whether it was merely one kind of a thought process or it was actually something that was actually used is a question that I would not uh, try to jump in and keep my listening over. Because all the instruments that you have, actually if you are going to talk about measuring, it talks only about navigating. Even whether you are talking about shadow, which could have easily been converted into measuring, let's say, more than there is no text which talks about measuring Murta. The uh, title itself is called Nadige Padalam. Uh, Nadige Walking. Okay. Uh, Nadige Walking. So it is only about Nadige that is ever talked about in all this. I am not talking about high uh, Sanskrit or high uh, astronomy literature, even Tamil astronomy literature. I am talking only about practical day to day use by practitioners at uh, daily life. Thank you. At this, Mr. Babu, the present speaker. But I forgot about the comment. The uh, convention, from ritual point of view, is that uh, from sunrise to sunset. It is 30 Nadi and sunset to next sunrise is 30 Nadi. You may say, so what? Every day, the day length and night length is not same. But for ritual purposes, the uh, convention was that you have to consider it as same and then measure it in that fashion. From, but actual sunrise to actual sunset, not fixed is uh, equal. Today, for example, if, when you are using this law, we don't say that 6 o'clock the sun rises and 6 o'clock it sets. Sunrise might be at 5 o'clock and sunset may be at 8 o'clock. In some places it's even 12 o'clock. Okay? But the uh, ritual convention is 30 and 30, which is very different from the standard high astronomy calculation. In high, standard high astronomy calculation, a day is 60 nadiga, so it is not divided in this equal fashion. This is also something that I thought I would underline. 